Now the next issue that we need to talk about is how much does family institution contribute to our curriculum? There was an important case uh, in the early 2000s when people were promoting that how uh, keeping in mind the new paradigm of learning, learning needs to take place in an individual manner. Whereas alignment of knowledge needs to take place collectively. So there was a big push in Chicago uh, school system in the United States to make learning as part of homework and make homework as part of school activity because there was a teacher to regulate, monitor and make sure that then uh, constructivists can facilitate a constructivist learning. What happened was they, they implemented this curriculum and only to find out that it was not feasible because especially the urban poor where the families were involved were not able to participate as effectively as the suburban uh, middle class families. So immediately the curriculum was dropped. The system had to be re-tweaked so that there would be a more democratic approach to education. All members of society could equally participate. So this was a classic example how a family uh, needs to be involved or a, a curriculum designer needs to incorporate a family's participation in a curriculum design. For another thing is, uh, there was a, is a huge study done on the influence of school. It was found out that the, sig the most significant uh, contributor to the success of any individual is basically the qualification of a father. Because somehow the only factor when they correlated all the different factors that contributed to a, a student's success, it boiled down to one thing. The parents uh, notion of learning and involvement in their children's education was a single most highest contributor to the learning success of, an of a student. In an agri agrarian uh, pre-industrial society, uh, gender determined the role of an individual. Men worked at various craft or the farm. When boys were old enough, they worked alongside their fathers. Women, on the other hand, maintained the house, carried out ch uh, caring for children and training the girls. Thus, men, women and often children worked for the betterment of the whole family and there was no individual breadwinner. Families were large and extended family where parents extended family where parents lived with their adults children was common and the size of the family determined the success of the family if you notice it wouldn't be too distant future ago you would have heard your parents or your grandparents keep reminiscing how families were huge you had eight children nine children and and so on because families benefited with the large workforce the shift, in industrial, the shift to industrial economy brought about changes to family institution. The extended family and parents lived with their adult children and their children rapidly declined, especially in the urban areas. The family changed from extended kinship to a nuclear family, and which consists of parents and their children. Men moved from working in the farms to cottage industries to work in offices or factories owned by corporations. Women moved out of the household to work in businesses, factories and offices. A double income family gradually became common in many of today's society. As parents worked away from home, children suffered. Conditions at work sometimes strained relationship between father and mother, which, which leading to stress in the children affecting their performance. However, this may not be true in all cases, but it's just that this major economic shift has also have a major transformation in the family unit. To compound the problems, families were families had to deal with single parenting, which is a new phenomenon that is ever rapidly increasing. Single parents have a different dimension to its family. 
more, as more families moved and live in urban areas, a different set of values are acquired. For example, in the early days, family, religion and school complemented each other as a social institution. A shift of value has resulted in a change of relationship between family, education and religion. Social norms that guide the behavior of early generations have been relaxed and social institutions increasingly losing their ability to guide the uh, guide desired behavior. I mean, what good example that you can see today uh, is the riots in London. The, one of the contributors to the riots were, besides poverty and disfranchisement and all, the lack of the notion of right and wrong. There was, there was no, there was what was considered as the parent element was missing. There was nobody there to give somebody two tight slap and tell you this is wrong. So if you see, so there's a major shift when the economy shift, family unit shift. When family unit shift, there's a need from the curriculum to shift. So now, I'm sure at this very moment, the curriculum designers in UK are running back to the drawing boards. They need to see where did they go wrong. I mean, how come a whole bunch of youth all over the nation suddenly burst into insanity. Now, changing family institution to had incorporate with this notion of individuality. In the current economy or the industrial, uh, the knowledge based economy has more emphasis on an individual than the family unit. So what you will find is more and more people having, have, having to live in urban congested places and and live in an more and more individual setting. Uh, the places are getting confined and it is economically disadvantaged to have many kids. Partly because the new career minded person needs to uh, move regularly and having a family or having attached to a permanent location becomes disadvantaged. So even more, so the curriculum needs to to transform, to accommodate this, uh, this notion of transformation in society.